Well, how you doing? Uh, just doing a little work on my cicada, cicada survey here. Uh, brood two, you know, the 17-year locust, the scrouge of ancient Egypt. Rising temperatures are bringing them out. Uh, we expect to see them soon, any day now, I think, is what they're predicting. I think I may see one over there, but I'm just getting a little bit of a head start out here. You know, the emergence of cicadas are just one evidence of the rising temperatures here in River City. We're down here on the river, and as, as you can see behind me, the shad, shad fishermen are out in force. The shad, uh, as you know, was an important commercial fishery in colonial America. Why, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson themselves spent many a happy day on this river, right over there, right on the end of that dock, where they set up shop and caught themselves some dinner while they rudimented rudimented on the future of the new republic which they had just brought into being. Uh, they shared many a fine meal, those two great men, as will be the case with these people. These people here today who will carry that honorable tradition back to their dining rooms and kitchens throughout River City. But that's not, that's not why we're here. <laughs> As the, as the weather heats up in River City and the clothes come off, it presents a challenge to those of us in broadcast news when we have to mic up folks to capture talking heads. I was going to, to share some techniques in that direction, but the, but the TV news staff let me down and did not assemble all the elements I needed to make, uh, to make for a compelling story. So now we're going to switch gears and I'm going to talk about whistles. As the weather heats up, many of us will head a field and we may find the great outdoors is fraught with danger. We could fall out of that boat down there and drown or be attacked by a wild bear while camping in those woods up there. In any case, you should, you should never go afield with, without some device to call for help if you need it. Of course, we all have, we all have cell phones these days, but cell phones aren't always reliable. We could we could drop them in the water down there. They could be eaten by that bear up there. Or, or the batteries could just plain die. That's why anyone who goes afield should carry a whistle. Today we're going to look at two from my extensive collection. Both were made by the Acme Whistle Company. The Acme Whistle Company. What the hell? That's over there in England. That's England across the ocean. Uh, the first one is going to be the Acme Thunderer. Number Number 63, I believe it was, in the catalog. This is a whistle that sees action in sporting and survival venues around the world. Its sound is legendary. You know, before I demonstrate a uh, word about technique, you just don't blow a whistle. You can hear the sound. The sound is not particularly impressive. The trick is to block the spout with your tongue. Build up a mighty column of air in your chest and use your tongue as a valve, as a valve to moderate, moderate the air so it comes out in explosive fashion, like this. Now the second, the second whistle I'm going to demonstrate is one connected with the most tragic story in maritime history. History, the sinking of the Titanic. If you had been aboard that ship that starry night, this is the sound you would have heard. As the crew frantically tried to herd you to safety, or to, or to your doom, as, as the case may have been. Uh, by way of disclaimer, uh, this isn't the exact whistle, of course. Uh, uh, those they were using went down with the boat and are at the bottom of the of the ocean. Uh, of course, they may have retrieved them and sold them to a rich dude for a tidy sum. But these aren't these aren't replicas either. Uh, this was made by the Acme Company, the same company that made the whistles they use on that ill-fated ship that slipped beneath the waves and into history over 100 years ago. This whistle was made on the same machinery and presses used to make the original, and for all intents and purposes, is identical. Identical. Now, now, from my extensive whistle collection, I would have to say that that of these two, of these two, uh, I would choose the standard Thunderer, the the I believe it's 63 in their catalog, over the Titanic version, because as you can hear, the standard version will carry better, I think, in emergency situations than the uh, than the more mellow 
mellow Titanic version. Well, of course, that's your choice. But, uh, you know, I have to put in a disclaimer. I focused. I focused on the P whistles because those are the ones, ones I prefer. Many survival experts will tell you that the P whistle isn't reliable. The P could jam for various reasons and render, render your whistle useless. They suggest uh, the P-less whistle uh, as an exemp this example. This is, I think, the Acme Tornado uh, 2000. Another good brand, perhaps, is Fox. Uh, a lot of people use this Fox Mini, Mini Fox 40. And then there's the old standby. I think this is the first P-less whistle to, uh, to make a dent in the sporting world, the uh, Fox 40 Classic. You can hear there's not a lot of difference between the P-less whistles. Uh, I don't know. I, I personally prefer the craftsmanship and tradition of the brass peed, peed whistle. But before you buy a whistle, uh, survival situations, for survival situations, I would, I would suggest you do your homework and pick the technology technology that suits your personal situation. Uh, you probably will go with the plastic uh, whatever. Huh. Anyway, the, the sun is setting. The sun is setting on TV News Badge, and that concludes this, this presentation. Uh, I, hope, I hope you found it interesting, and thanks. Thanks for stopping by. That went well.